What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is week two of the GBA Season 7. We are doing the locker room. Uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, new to the series, what we're doing here is uh, I'm going over my thought process and my team building that I did when preparing for my battle this week, which is against the Detroit Steel Wings. So this is uh, coached by Crimson Seabed, good friend. Uh, I like this guy a lot. He took a brief hiatus from the GBA, and he is back. And let me just tell you, while we were drafting, I did not think his team was very good. But upon preparation for it, it is devastatingly good. This team is so much better than it looks like on paper, and my team really struggles with it. I'm not going to lie, guys. Looking at, we were going to originally be battling around about, and it's about 10 o'clock now. We're going to be battling in about two hours. Um, it seems like... Uh, he might not be ready yet. He's having some genning issues and stuff like that. And Chase is a really busy guy, guys. I, I, I suggest you check him out if you're interested. He has a lot. He puts up a lot of content. He streams very regularly. He's really committed to the, the YouTube game. So definitely go check him out. Um, but let's go over the teams real quick before I talk much further about this. Um, we have, uh, on my team, uh, you can see it on the left-hand side. I am running Tapu Fini. Uh, I have... Uh, Salamence, who is my Z captain. I have Arcanine, Kinkelder, Ferrothorn, Gengar, Bronzong, Heliolisk, Umbreon, Aerodactyl, and Gyarados. And on his side, you can see he has the Tornadus T, the Crocodile, the Entei, the Sylveon, the Slowking, the Magneton, the Cobalion, the Kyurem, the Skuntank, uh, the Oricorio, and the Serena. Now, uh, I organized my Pokemon on the left in order that I drafted them uh, for each round. The Mon on the right, his team, I organized in tiers based on how likely a bring I think they are. Um, so this week, I'm f I'm all but con I'm all but positive that the first three are coming. Um, Entei being the least likely of the three that he would that he would bring, but. Tornadus T and Crocodile, there's not even a single doubt in my mind that they're coming. Sylveon and Slowking uh, are, provide a pretty good wall option. Slowking um, handles, switches into Moana really well. Uh, the Tornadus T and the Slowking create a little bit of a regenerator core. Uh, Slowking is also a, a decent switch, and if it's physically defensive to an Arcanine, it can handle... Uh, the Con a lot of the Kinkelders attacks pretty well, um, and can Oko back with Psychic. The Slow King is actually kind of a problem. So, looking at that, and looking at the rest of my team, that's that's one thing I noticed. The other thing I noticed is Magneton, uh, and the rest of his team has a lot of uh, momentum potential. He's got U-Turn on the Tornadus T, he's got Baton Pass on the Sylveon, Volt Switch on the Magneton, Volt Switch on the Cabalion. Just really like a lot of ways to work with that. So that's a problem for my team because he does have decent switch-ins to my offenses and uh, I don't have good switch-ins to his. So <laughs> here's what I came up with. Uh, my team this week is going to be Moana, Robocrop, Salamence, or Madmence, Dumbledore, Night's Watch the Umbreon, and Klisk X the Heliolisk. So uh, let's go over what I'm bringing this week. Moana is coming this week as a choice scarf uh, with Moonblast, Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, and Defog. I'm really hoping that Moana can try and catch something off guard here. Um, it's Ice Beam will not Oko the Tornadus T, but it will kill after Stealth Rocks. Uh, the investment I have is sufficient that I can be modest and still outspeed a choice scarfed Magneton uh, and get off maybe a Hydro Pump uh, in time. Mr. Phone, you will have to shut up. You simply must. Okay, Mr. Phone is shutting <laughs> Mr. Phone is shutting up. Let's keep moving on here. Uh, th this is a relatively standard set. Uh, Defog, I'm not sure. I didn't really need the fourth move. Moonblast, Hydro Pump is good coverage. Uh, Moonblast is decent against a majority of his team, uh, with the exception being primarily the uh, Magneton. And I guess doesn't really do too much to Sloking either. So Moana is 
more of a revenge killer, kind of trying to threaten in that regard. I didn't want to run defensive this week because I don't want to run into the event that he keeps getting heavy attacks off with his offenses and I'm just kind of soaking them and not really doing much back. He has good switch-ins to Moana, so uh, I need to get a surprise kill with Moana this week and I wanted to have the default coverage just in case because he does have some hazard setting abilities on his team. Robocrop is coming this week, fully defensive. This is, uh, I needed, I needed help against his uh, offensive threats this week. Entei obviously will take on Robocrop pretty well. Um, and I had to run a Shed Shell as the item because the Magneton can potentially trap me. I don't know what the Magneton's ability will be necessarily, but there's a really good chance that I, because I have a Ferrothorn, that he will run Magnet Pull. And I want to be able to get out of that. I don't want to get trapped in O code by, uh, by a Magneton. So. Uh, I'm running Power Whip, Gyro Ball, Stealth Rock, and Protect. Protect is to scout to see if anything's going to be carrying any unfortunate hidden power fires. Uh, Robocrop's a pretty good switch into Sylveon, barring that he does not have HP fire. And so this will give me an opportunity to protect and check that out and scout for that. Uh, this is going to be my Stealth Rocker this week. I was considering Bronzong as my Stealth Rocker. I don't know, um, something about the matchups, I, I don't I don't like that he's not able to switch into the Crocodile. Uh, the Crocodile obviously has a Fire Fang, but Fire Fang won't do too much to Robocrop. Actually, it's, um, it's not an Oko, and Power Whip does Oko him in return, uh, unless he's Intimidate. And if he is Intimidate, then... Uh, I'm, I don't need to worry about Moxie, I don't need to worry about Z-Crystal Moxie, because if Z-Crystal Moxie killed Robocrop, then I might be in a little bit more of an issue. So, because of the threats that I have on the upper tier of his Mon here, I opted to bring a Support Mence. So, Mad Mence is set up to outspeed Entei, and after the Intimidate, be able to survive a two-hit KO from Stone Edge, roost off the damage, and stall him out of Stone Edges. At which point, once he's either low on Stone Edges or not able to, to dish them out anymore, um, Mad Mints will never, will never have to worry about the, um, the Entei again. I'm running Draco Meteor just in case I get unfortunately burned. I don't want to lose all of my potential. I'm running Steelium Z with Iron Tail. Uh, a Corkscrew Crash through a Sylveon Protect with a follow-up Iron Tail after Stealth Rocks kills Sylveon uh, with the spread that I'm running right now. So, uh, so that's good. <laughs> that's good news. That means that uh, I'm a pretty decent Sylveon counter here. Uh, Earthquake covers a lot of the rest of his team. It means that I can deal with the Magneton and the Iron Tail. Like I said, primarily just for the Sylveon. However, it does also hit the uh, Kyurem super effectively. And uh, the Draco Meteor, yeah, again, I want to have some offensive presence. And Draco hits really hard on a lot of his team, with the exceptions being two Mons that the other two moves handle. So uh, I have that there as my setup. Um... This Mad Mens is uh, very, very good at dealing with the Entei. There's very few scenarios where it wouldn't work out as an Entei counter. Uh, it would have to be that I'd switched in multiple times on Stealth Rock. Uh, yeah, I would have to have taken multiple Stealth Rock down because I outspeed him. And after the Intimidate, the the Stone Edge does, even if it's a Banded, not even, like, only slightly more than 50%. So I would need to literally switch in on Stealth Rocks twice and then take a Stone Edge um, in order for him to actually beat this Salamence. And that's not going to happen. If I see the Entei, the Salamence stays safe in the back and uh, I, I protect him as best as I can. Because like I said, I outspeed the Adamant variety. Uh, and if he's Jolly variety, then I really don't have to worry. The loss in power means that he, he can't even two-hit KO me with the Stone Edge. So, uh, and after I start roosting off, it's not hitting super effective on the Adamant Band set. And I'm just really, I'm just fine. So this is my Entei counter. It's also a very good Crocodile counter because he can't knock off the Steelium Z. So I get to 
uh, switch into knockoffs really well. The exact same thing that was true for the Stone Edge situation with Entei is true with the um, Crocodile also. I keep I'm almost saying for alligator here, and I know I'm just, I know it's gonna slip one of these days. I'm just gonna say for alligator and get it completely wrong. It's not for alligator. It's Crocodile. Uh, let's move on to the next one. So we're we're done with Mad Mints here. Uh, Dumbledore. Uh, the Kinkelder is coming this week. Uh, I put enough speed in it to outspeed a Sylveon that is defensive, running uh, eight speed IVs. So just EV. So just you know, kind of a random amount of speed just to make sure that I don't get outsped and O-Code by Hyper Voice. Uh, I'm running Life Orb Sheer Force and a Life Orb Sheer Force Poison Jab after Stealth Rocks will kill the Sylveon. The uh, Mock Punch is primarily so that I have a way to threaten the Kyurem and the Magneton who, because I'm not running uh, Assault Vest this week, can do pretty good damage to the Dumbledore. The Earthquake hits the Magneton, super effective, and Oko's it. It hits the uh, Cabalion, super effective, and Oko's it, and Cabalion count Oko me back. The, it hits the Skuntank, super effective. It hits the Entei, super effective. Ground coverage is very good against his team. Um, Thunder Punch is there to... Uh, switch to take out an incoming Tornadus T and to hit the uh, Slow King super effective. So predicting a switch, both of those are decent switch ins to Dumbledore's stab and even coverage that I might have for other things. So if he predicts the earthquake on the Magneton, then I can predict the switch with Thunder Punch and take that out. Um, other thoughts about this set yeah just running max attack um i didn't really need the odd hp number because he's a fighting type and that's really negligible damage from the switch in but i did it anyway and i put uh, an additional four into defense and special defense just to maximize the uh, effect of my evs on this spread night's watch night's watch is payback wish protect and curse set this set cannot lose to a calm mind slow king it cannot that slow king uh, no matter what coverage it ends up bringing can get to plus six and cannot take out night's watch meanwhile i can well if i switch in on a plus six i might have a problem but i can get i just need one curse to be able to two hit ko the slow king and he needs to be at plus i still don't think at plus six he actually two hit ko's me uh, the Night's Watch spread is maximizing his special defense. It makes me a very good switch into Tornadus T, a very good switch into Slow King, a very good switch into the Magneton. Um, unfortunately, until I get a couple of curses up, I'm a little bit weak to the Entei and the Cabalion. And also the Crocodile, uh, if he if he's running Superpower or something like that. But all I need is one curse, and in practice, uh, this Night's Watch can come very close to sweeping his entire team uh, after if I get a couple curses off safely. But that's the key word there, uh, because a lot of things have no problem switching into an Umbreon. So uh, it's a it'll be a difficult set for me to to make work, but it's. Failing that, it's still a wish passer, and it's a very good switch into some of his specially offensive threats. Uh, I just need to make sure that it's not losing me too much momentum, switching it in on on things uh, that are just easily going to switch out and give him opportunities on other threats. Uh, the Klisk X uh, is running Thunderbolt, Surf, Focus Blast, and U-Turn. I didn't want to run Volt Switch, uh, even though I'm a Choice Specs variety. Uh, because I don't want to get trapped in on the Crocodile. Uh, Focus Blast alongside Thunderbolt does very well for his team. Uh, the things that would resist the Thunderbolt, uh, almost all of which are weak to the Focus Blast. That includes the Crocodile, the uh, Magneton, and also the Kyurem. All of them resist the Thunderbolt, all of them are hit super effective by the Focus Blast. Surf is there to uh, uh, basically is a safe click if I predict the uh, Crocodile is coming in or just to ensure that if I know that I outspeed just to ensure a hit uh, without having to rely on Focus Blast. It also hits the Entei super effectively 
Um, it can help against <laughs> Fire Oracor. I don't know why I even need to talk about Oracor. As you can see, I opted not to put four different Oracorio dancer forms on the bottom. The Oracorio is not <laughs> an issue for my team at all. I have run numerous calcs. Uh, the only way it would be an issue is if I was running Dragon Dance on Gyarados or Mad Mance, and I'm not. So, <laughs> it, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not concerned with it at all. I'm also not concerned with the Serena. I actually put the Serena even lower. Almost every single one of my mons beats the Serena 1v1. Uh, that includes the Moana, which is very sad <laughs> that that's the case, because Serena has very high attack and Trop Kick, but even Life Orbed Adamant Trop Kick uh, while it can two-hit KO the Moana, Moana can outspeed and two-hit KO in return uh, with both Moonblast and Ice Beam, and Moonblast isn't even a super effective attack, and it's my safest click. So it's... <laughs> it's, it's sad because I actually, for a long time during the draft, I was thinking, like, do I want Serena? Do I want her? She's a rapid spinner, she's got good attack. Um... And when he made the pick, I was like, that's a really good last round pick. It's a really good spin option, gives you some clearance. Uh, I thought it was a good pick. And a lot of people kind of, uh, kind of mocked the pick. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I stand with Chase here. I thought it was a good pick, but in actually calculating against my team, I don't know about other teams, maybe it does some massive work, but against my team, I'm just, I'm really not afraid of it. Its coverage options are a little lacking. And, uh... Drop kick, her coverage with um, fighting, it just it just doesn't, and uh, and play rough. It's just not enough. It's just not enough for for almost any of my mons. Defensive Arcanine shut it down so completely and so entirely. However, I'm not bringing Arcanine this week. So that's my team this week, guys. Uh, again, I said I mentioned I think already that the U-turn is there because I don't want um, too many things won't switch in on it that would make Volt Switch a good pick and it threatens losing me the momentum because I'm opting for choice specs this week. So that is the team. Let me know what you guys would have uh, what would have brought. I was considering the um, other things I was considering. The Bronzong over the Ferrothorn. However, that would make me a little bit weaker to the Crocodile. Crocodile is a pretty safe switch in there. It lowers my offensive presence. Uh, they're both rockers, sure, uh, but I I don't know. I just I didn't I wasn't feeling it this week. Um, the Gyarados again. He does have the Oracorio. I don't, and he would outspeed uh, picking up my dancing moves uh, because he does actually have higher base speed than the Gyarados does. So I didn't want to do that. The Aerodactyl. Um, outspeeds and can Oko the Tornadus T unless it's a defensive set but I didn't bring it because it can't effectively switch in knowing all the coverage moves that Tornadus T has and so while I could have brought it it could have been my stealth rocker it could be my defogger I think I would rather leave the def I don't see defogging as being particularly important for me to do this game but I have it on Moana anyway, just in case I need it. And Moana doesn't really need an additional coverage move there. So I'm fine with that. And, ah, uh, Aerodactyl. I, I don't know, I, I feel like uh, he has an Intimidate Mon that would have no problem switching in on me. And I don't want to give Crocodile the a free switch. Basically, I don't, I don't really see anything I can do that can out-pressure the Crocodile. Uh, even running coverage fang moves and stuff like that. The, it's it's a free switch into the crocodile, especially if it's an intimidate. And I can't do that because I'm I do have a pretty difficult time against the crocodile. Uh, not gonna lie. So so I couldn't bring that this week. Gengar. Everything Oko's it. Like everything on his team has just hitting things naturally with their stab moves Oko the Gengar, uh, the Hurricane Oko's Gengar, Knock Off Oko's Gengar, Entei's Sacred Fire Oko's Angar. Uh, Hyper Voice doesn't, but if it packs Psychic coverage it does. The uh, potentially Calm Mind Slow King, um, 
obviously wouldn't switch in, but even could just revenge. I can't even, as a Specs Oko, a Slow King with Shadow Ball, even though it's super effective. The Magneton, yeah, it's a kind of an evenish matchup, but you will kill me. Uh, the Cabalion, didn't really calc that one, but I think it gets Earthquake. The Kurum, Oko's me, I don't Oko it back. The Skun Tank can take Shadow Balls pretty well. Serena and Oracorio both lose to it, but I don't. I don't need to bring a Mon that beats those two Mons, so, and the Arcanine, just because it, it doesn't, his physically offensive threats that I would want to counter with a defensive Arcanine beat it, and uh, an offensive Arcanine is relatively effectively walled by um, a physically defensive, well, he has... The option of Slow King and Crookedile makes it a problem. If I want to be, if I want to be able to take out the Slow King with Wild Charge, uh, it needs to be banded, and then you can switch it to Crookedile. So it's kind of one of those problems. I just opted not to bring it this week. I don't think that Arcanine necessarily is a bad bring, uh, whereas I do think that uh, the the lower tier or the last picks that I brought end up being a little bit of a a little bit of a weakness. So that's my team this week, guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you would have wanted me to bring. Uh, and if you think I should have done anything different in my team planning, because, um, <laughs> I don't know. The, I'm nervous for this battle, honestly. I've battled Chase before. We had a really good battle in Season 4. Uh, in Season 5, I swept him pretty effectively with a Latias, and so we are one-on-one -on -one against each other uh, in... But I always have fun games with him. I really do enjoy my games with Chase. So, looking forward to battling you, Crimson. I will see you on the battlefield tomorrow. Um, the one really, really unfortunate thing... I, if we battle today... I, I like battling uh, in the mornings on my days off. I get to wake up, kind of have a look at my team, play some video games. Like That's fun for me. Unfortunately, since we're battling tomorrow, I actually work tomorrow. Uh, a 12-hour shift. So, we're not going to be battling until... I get home from work uh, after a 12-hour shift and going to the gym at 5 in the morning is is kind of tough, uh, to be honest. I'll, I'll have been up for like 17 hours or something like that by the time we battle, so I'll be tired. But uh, I make no excuses. I still think if, if I bring... If I can navigate the battle to the way I like it, I think I can, I think I can win this match. Um, but... But Chase is, a, Chase is a decent battler, and he's got a very threatening team to my team. Honestly, guys, very threatening. So I am scared, but we will see uh, We will see tomorrow, guys. So uh, again, I, I cannot stress this enough. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.